guys, welcome back to my channel, Lissa's Letters. My name is Alyssa and I'm a hand lettering artist and today I want to teach you how to create something that I use often in my own hand lettering art and that is banners. Banners are an excellent way to add some dimension and visual interest to your piece of artwork and they can really help make a word or phrase pop and stand out. So today I'm going to be walking you step by step through how to create five different types of really simple banners that you're going to be able to master by the end of this video. Make sure you stick around for the second half of the video where I'll be showing you how I create my own piece of hand lettering artwork incorporating one of the types of banners that I'm going to teach you how to do today. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start off by drawing a rectangle, which is going to be the front face of the banner. Then we'll draw two diagonal lines where the banner wraps around, and then two lines that are parallel to the first rectangle we drew. We'll draw lines that are parallel to that, and they should be about the same height or a little bit shorter than the rectangle. There's different ways you can draw the end of the banner, and for this one, I'll just use a V shape. And here we'll just finish it off. There might be names out there for what the different types of banners are that I'm going to be showing you today, but I don't know what those are, so I'm just going to call this one a rectangle banner because it starts with a rectangle. I like to shade in the part of the banner that looks like it's going away from the person who's looking at it because I feel like it gives it some dimension. So the second banner is really similar to the first one except it's a little bit more fluid. Instead of drawing straight lines at the top and bottom, we'll draw curves shaped like a smile. Aww. And on either side coming out of that curve, there's these wavy shapes and then lines that are parallel to that. I should have come up with a better word than wavy shapes, but that's all I could think of at the moment. <laughs> I'll make the ends of this one a V shape too, and then we'll finish it off by closing it up. And this one we'll just, let's call it the curved banner because it has curves. Again, that is not the technical term, that is my term that I'm just giving it right now. <laughs> And let's shade this one in with some vertical hatching, just to show you that there's some different options. I love using this particular shape of banner as a focal piece in my artwork because it's symmetrical. The third banner I'm going to teach you is very similar to the first two, but it goes at a diagonal. We'll start off by drawing an S-shaped curve, and one side of the banner is going to be the highest point, and I've chosen the left side. Now we'll draw an S-shaped curve that's exactly parallel to the first one, and then connect those two curves together. Where the banner curves around to the back, we're gonna make that same wavy shape that we made in banner number two, and then we'll make curves that are parallel to that. You can make the ends of the banner a V shape like we've done before, or you can just make them a straight line like I'm doing here. And we'll finish it off here by connecting these last points. This is the basic diagonal banner. And the next two banners that I'm going to be teaching you are based off of the same diagonal shape. But before we look at how to create banners four and five, Let's just check out some different variations of the diagonal banner. For example, you can choose to make the banner taller or longer, or you can change the direction that the banner is tilted in. This way it's tilted downwards, and in this one here it's tilted upwards. In this piece of artwork, I included a diagonal banner that's oriented upwards from the left to the right. Banner number four is supposed to look like it's coming out towards you. So we'll start off making the top part of the banner and it's gonna be a bunch of waves. And then we're gonna make lines that connect that top line to the bottom of the banner, which should be parallel to the top. This is where things are a little bit different than the other banners that I've taught you. So this line here goes in front of the bottom line. Then on the left side here, you'll draw a parallel line to the top and do the same on the right side. And let's call this one the wavy banner. 
All right, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret here. I screwed up on my first attempt of drawing banner number five. And what ended up happening was I drew an extra line where there isn't supposed to be one. But I think it's a really good example of why it's important to sketch the banners in pencil before you put down the ink. Lesson learned. Okay, this is banner number five, take two. So this is essentially the same thing as the diagonal banner, except we're adding one extra wave. So it curves around one more time on the side. Let's call that banner the very wavy diagonal banner. I use this banner a lot in my artwork because I feel like it has so much movement to it. So now comes the fun part. I'm gonna make a piece of artwork using one of the five banners that we talked about today. So I'm heading on over to Pinterest to get some inspiration for a color palette for this piece of artwork. And I am just loving this one here with those purples and teals. So I'm gonna look through my stash of brush pens here and see if I can find some colors that are similar to those in the picture. I think I have found the colors that most closely match the color palette that I was looking at earlier. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about the gold yet, but I think I might just go with this light brown Tombow. And I took my own advice this time and sketched it out in pencil. Ugh, there's like nothing more frustrating in the world than having a beautiful piece of artwork that you're working on and then you make a mistake and you can't go back, so. What I'm doing is just tracing the um, rough draft here with my light box, which was an amazing gift. Thank you so much, sister. The banner that I chose to go with was number five. And I am so happy that I did because it gives the piece so much movement and depth. And I'm realizing I completely forgot to mention what the quote is that I am hand lettering right now. So the quote is, never forget how wildly capable you are. And I just love this quote. I feel like it is so appropriate for anyone. And, you know, I've gone through some really, really, really difficult experiences within the past few years. And I just feel like there are so many times when I'm I have surprised myself with how strong and capable I have been. So yeah, I'm just really excited to create a piece of art out of these words that mean so much to me. So let's just talk a little bit about the piece of artwork itself and why I chose to do some of the different um, types of shading and things like that. So you'll notice I am using my colorless blender here for the word capable to create a gradient. So I wanted it to be really dark teal at the top of the word and then lighter at the bottom. And then I did the same thing with the purple in the word wildly. And oh, I just love how that word came out. I hardly ever use that color purple that you see in the word wildly. It's a muted purple, and I tend to use more saturated colors, but I just think it looks so good. To get the color of light teal that I wanted for this word, I combined a very, very light pastel blue and a very, very light, kind of minty green, almost bluish green color. I ended up spending probably a few hours doing the blending for this piece because I really just wanted it to look the way I wanted it to look, <laughs> I don't know. So, and I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out, um, but it did take a really long time. So now on to the part you guys have all been waiting for or why you've watched this video to begin with, and that's the banner. So I did end up going with that light brown Tombow Dual brush pen that I showed you guys before. And I'm going in and I'm first shading the corners or like where the banner makes a turn. Um, those are the areas that I'm shading darkest. Um, and then I'm kind of feathering it out 
so that it gets lighter and lighter. Um, and then also just to kind of give some definition to the edges of the banner so that it's not blending into the white of the paper, I'm um, giving the borders a little bit of pigment as well. My colorless blender got a ton of use with this banner because I didn't really do much writing on the paper at all with the brown brush pen. I just scribbled the brush pen on that piece of plastic you see to my right and then picked up the pigment with my colorless blender. So here's how the piece turned out. I ended up going in with a fine liner and giving an outline to all of the words, but I really liked how the banner looked without an outline, so I just left it the way it was, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I really hope you liked what you saw, and I hope you liked the format of this video. If you have any questions or suggestions for how I can make these videos even better, leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you did like what you see, make sure you subscribe so you can see more fun hand lettering videos like this and give it a thumbs up so that other people can see it too. Thanks so much again for watching this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. I don't know how many attempts it's gonna take me to make this. That is definitely not right. What is that? How many squiggles are there in this banner? Ah!